Hey. Hello. Hi. Wow, got a nice little side view. This is amazing. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. Yeah. Wow. Hold on. Maybe I should try it too. You look like you're yeah. on a Joe Rogan podcast. Oh my God. No, I don't want that. I should change my view up. <laughs> I look really creepy, especially when I just look to the side like this. Cause you Does can't. <laughs> I actually didn't realize I am doing that. It's well, right. <laughs> but you look fine. I, I, I guess with I the, look po okay, the, though? the ponytail shows for me. Yeah. You look great. Wait, you let me fine. see the ponytail again. Hold on. Hold on. That's cool. I didn't even realize how different we look from the side, you know? It's it's all about perspective, Jen. That's what it is. Perspective, and that's what we're talking about today. That That is exactly what we're talking about today. Yeah. And, you, and you know, my perspective, your perspective looks great from my okay. perspective. I'm trying to cheat out. No, no, no. I, now I made you feel, you know, I just brought it up so that I could show you my ponytail because I'm so proud of it, but I don't get it, to show yeah, it to cool. anybody. It's a really cool ponytail. Thank you. How I, long have you had your ponytail? Um, as long as I can remember, but I am suffering from dementia. So no, I okay. had it for like a day, two days. Yeah. That's so it. Well. This yeah. is new. Yeah. It grew like a chia seed. Just, That's just a fast. chia. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm really, really excited to show it off. Obviously, I couldn't wait. No, I've had it for. I started growing the hair out in quarantine because I, I I look so slick with it all back. This is it does oh, look slick. I'm so impressed with myself. I want to do that. Do you think I could? I've always been like hiding behind my bangs and glasses. <laughs> I'm just hiding. <laughs> I think like like it, the world can't see me. But know? the bangs, no, the bang. It's almost like the curtain is drawn already. Mm -hmm. It's it's oh, like. Right. The, the, the curtains are up and you can see the sunlight of your soul through your eyes and rest of your face. Oh, I like that. But it's, it's not letting what's it all that the curtain. What's that curtain? That's like, you know, there's a tiny curtain. There's like the curtains that are long. And then there's like the curtain that's like, a, you know, those tiny curtains. They're like mini above, you know? You oh, know yes. That's what I, bangs remind me of now. Oh yeah. I wish I knew like the term kitchens form too. Sometimes have, I don't know the, this yes. isn't an interior design podcast, is it? Well, we do have a segment on that later. Okay. So I'm glad that you're coming prepared because yeah. we yeah. the topic was curtains and we're going to talk about that right after Backsplash. I have, I have so many hot takes on curtains. Oh, man, I can tell. Mm -hmm. Which ones are like the bangs? Which ones are like the ponytails? And yeah. we'll just compare them juxtapositions with uh, with hair. I think yes. that would be really nice. Yes. I love this perspective. Thank you. Yes. Well. Good. Well, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Yeah. You're very welcome. Thank you for showing up. A lot of guests don't show up. So I just no. have to talk by myself for an hour. Wait, for really? They don't show up? Solo episodes. What, yeah. do you, what do you have to do? Dude, I have to call them and be like, mom, I told you five o'clock. And my mom's mom. like, I'm so sorry, son. I had something to do. I was like, mom, why are you doing that accent? You're not from Is New York. It, oh, and, okay. I was going to say, <laughs> is that your mom? <laughs> it's it's my mom pretending to be Sebastian Maniscalco, I think. So okay, can you do your mom? Can you do an impression of your mom? Of my mom? Uh, yes. Okay. Hold on. <clears throat> Son, I'm very disappointed in you. Oh, bother! My mom is Winnie the Pooh, apparently. <laughs> oh, bother! Oh, bother! Wait. <laughs> Wait, no, that was Eeyore. I think you did an Eeyore. I did an impersonating. Eeyore. I always slip into Eeyore. I always slip into Eeyore. I think Eeyore had bangs, actually. Is that why? Did he? Oh my God, did he really? He did. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I've, um, <laughs> this, this, is, um, this hair is new. This, this color, I just dyed it dark. I, I was going I was to say something, but I blonde. didn't want to say something. I thought it was white, no. actually. White. It was white. Yeah. Well, I, you have to gradually come down from blonde. <laughs> but yeah, so I it was white. I went silver. And then I you if you dye it brown from silver, it's going to turn green, according to the, a color wheel, apparently. 
Ooh. apparently science. Oh, yeah. so yeah. you slowly, you kind of slowly do it. I skipped a few shades, but I, I um, dyed it today. I was like, oh, I'm going to be on camera. I guess I'll, I guess I'll change up my appearance. Oh, yeah. Let's take a big risk. Let's, let's see if it go. turns go out purple. It. Yes. Yes. So I did that. That's great. Well, yeah. it looks fantastic. Thank the gray you. or the silver also looked glorious. It, I thought oh, man, it was like so X-Men. Oh, yeah. Yes. Storm, like a storm. Yes. Yeah. That's what I thought. It, it's high maintenance. It is fun. Um, I got, I don't know if I told you, uh, well, I probably haven't because this is the first time I'm talking to you, but um, <laughs> I uh, went semi, I went some, you may have recognized me from a semi viral TikTok video. 100,000 views. I don't want to, I don't want to boast and brag, but. Oh, oh that's how I was going to intro you in, but thanks for stealing my thoughts. Okay, no, yeah. No, um, but, but everyone commented on my hair and how it made me look 65. So I gave into the bullying and I changed my hair color and now it's brown. So oh. you win, you win TikTok. Oh man, tick turn back the TikToks of time. I I would say go and do silver again because it looked yeah. phenomenal. I didn't Thanks. oh and, and I, really it, cool. there was just such a mystery to you as well because I was like, is she forty eight or is she eighteen? I don't know. You don't know. You know that's <laughs> yeah. But, you don't know my age. But I'm not, and I'm not going to ask it. My mom told me, Stephanie, you, you never do it. It's a woman's age. So. Well, I, I, I will say I have hot takes on everything and age is, I'm not ashamed of age. And like, I think that like, it's kind of interesting that our society is like, don't ask women their age. I think that could be applied to like anyone, maybe they're sensitive about it, but I sure. think it's interesting. I think that's something where, and I respect your mother, of course, but like, I think it's something where Fair. like, we, 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 I think that's in, encouraging this like, age is important to women, you know, and that they can't age, not allowing women to age. So I liked having gray hair because, and I, you know, I thought it was cool, but it was also empowering to be like, take that power. Like a lot of people dye their hair away from gray, obviously. So it was cool to like, kind of play around with that. And like, age doesn't matter. I just turned 31, by the way, but uh, in December, uh, what? Oh my God. Is it February? Okay. I thought I just turned 31. But... Ooh, I know I was going to give you the happy birthday, but when you said December, I was like, no, was way too late for that. Happy birthday. Oh no. I was going to sing it too. I had a little cake, you but then you're like, nah, February. December. Yeah. 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 I, that's weird. But yeah, I'm not, uh, I, I mean, you maybe be, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm I feel, I still feel young, not according to TikTok, but I still feel young. Uh, maybe I'm not, that's why I'm not ashamed of my age, but I hopefully I continue feeling that way as I age. Well, I would say you exude youth. So Thank you. your humor, your now brown hair, but even if it was silver, I would say the youth is exuded. The, I think yeah. it's just the face and the, the humor and just the mm. overall expression of self. Now, the decor with the little trees and with the, is that a breeze actually metal in? It's a it's metal. It's a metal breeze. It is uh, depicting wind. Okay, it's depicting wind. That is screaming <laughs> Martha Stewart age. So whatever that is, I'm okay, feeling. I'm it's, getting rid of it right now. Hold on. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little older. That yeah, that makes it. I think my mom has the same one. She might have two gusts I, of wind. Again, I respect your mother, and that's why I have this well my mom's 31 too so i yeah i mean age. we we know 30s it's it's a defining moment in our lives do you feel comfortable with your age i feel so comfortable with my age i am 32 i just oh turned God. 32 actually Did in you? june yeah no, so, shut up. <laughs> so yeah if you want to wish me happy birthday that would be oh, i was gonna sing expected. happy birthday and everything <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, 32, yeah, yeah. 32 good, years good, young. Good year. Yeah, it's an excellent year. I feel like I know what I want in life. I feel like I can just go ahead and grow a ponytail and it's not yet creepy, I guess. No, no. I don't know what the window is for creepy ponytail on a guy, but I don't know. I'm all for like doing like, like screw what people think. Like if you want a ponytail, 
wear a ponytail. I mean, I say that, but I'm, I, I just changed my hair color because TikTok said they didn't like it. So yeah, like, I was going to say, yeah, but, I mean, uh, you know, yeah, and with all the talk here, I mean, I'm all for just expressing your true self. I just dyed my hair like seven shades across white. But because... do you, but do you, you do yeah, you. But... <laughs> you do, no, you do you. I'm, I'm different. Okay. I'm, I'm going to do what everyone else says I should do. <laughs> you, you do you. So, so please, I want to dig into this TikTok video yeah it's a new app <laughs> please oh, yeah. tell us how it works i don't know what it, i thought it was a concept of time i thought it was the sound that a clock makes as right. it traverses through so much uh, more yes mm -hmm. so much more but mm -hmm. TikTok and and your video specifically right. what was it so, and how did it go viral it was, so i had been i had been doing TikTok for a year at that point and Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I mean, the story ends with me deleting my account. So it's not like, yeah. Oh, what a twist. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'm going okay. to Tarantino this. I story. was going to say, yeah. It all, I, I imagine you smoking a cigarette and you're like, and that's how I deleted <laughs> <And> my account. <laughs> the rain and just like. <laughs> um, so Tarantino is known for the wet for his weather scenes. Uh, so that's why you have the wind in the trees behind you. Windy. Mm -hmm. mm, the um, so the story. So so uh, I I had a bunch of videos up that were just like either lip syncing, you know, sure. a couple of dance videos or transition. They like to do like the transition of like you know. I did a couple of cosplays, you know. And, um, nice. Of of which did you do storm ones? I did not do Star Wars. <laughs> Missed opportunity. Um, I definitely did Star, disappointed I there. Did Star Wars. I did Spider Gwen. So the hair kind of helped with Spider Gwen. Badass. Yeah, nice. it was really cool. I love that. Um, and then like a Ravenclaw outfit that I have. So I did those three. Okay, nice. Which one was the most received? Did you burn Star the Wars. ones that people trashed? Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, because people, because I'm going to go with what the, the, the people want, but to whoever is listening, you do you, you know. You know, I recently got scorched on YouTube because I interviewed Mark Norman, and then Mark Norman put the video on his YouTube channel as well. And people apparently don't like the laugh of old Steph, Steph Chuck Chucks over here because I got, they, they just, they just didn't like they, it. They didn't like your laugh. They told me they could, it was unwatchable because of my laugh. I don't think that at all. I really enjoy your laugh. I love oh, your laugh. Why? Yeah. Thank you. I actually, yeah. one comment said that I sounded like I was playing a spoiled prince in a high school play. And I was like, that is spot. That's my username now on Instagram. Spoiled Prince 87. Spoiled <laughs> Prince. 87, the year. I do. And I do. I do. I do. I sound like it. I think it's accurate. That guy was good because he was creative about it. Oh, so okay. I, I, I do remember one roast that I really loved. And it was, well, two. One was, please drink some water, which, which they're not wrong. They're not wrong, so I can't be mad at them. I don't drink any water. The second one was, I, I swear white people age like day-old avocados, and I've never laughed harder at that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> how, badly, how tired and how badly I aged, and I was like, okay, that's, okay, that's fair. <laughs> so, I disagree with... I mean, I don't disagree with the comment because I'm 32, but I, I used to joke that I was 10 years older when people were like, how old are you? And you I'd would... be like, I'm, I'm 42. And they're like, yeah, I can see that. And I was like, <gasps> wait, so the joke didn't become like, it, it hurt you. As yes, you said the joke? I threw it out without realizing it was a boomerang. And then it came back and knocked me right in my 32 uh, year old teeth. The old so, boomerang joke. So yeah, yeah, that was old, the classic boom. The classics joke. technique. <laughs> So that one hit me and I learned not to say that. And now I just, I do age like a, an avocado. So, avocado. but I don't think um, you do. I don't know. May, maybe that's what, did you purposefully do the Zoom, side angle? Cause the profile, yeah. it makes you look Zoom, younger. Zoom has a, in, like touch up my appearance, touch up my appearance. Thing. So this isn't what I look like at all. <laughs> 
um so the video let me tell you what the so i'd been doing you know some just random videos i got a couple hundred views right caught 10 likes you know a couple hundred views and then and then and i had like purpose i had purposefully like like hashtags and everything on those videos right i was like these are high quality (laughs) this is what i this is a trend this is the music right right then a random evening i'm just like i just thought of a funny thought i was on well, I had been on um, a dating app. Uh, I don't know if you know it. It's called Tinder. And Oh, Tinder. <laughs> Tinder. Yes. Tinder. Well. Um, I was on Tinder and I, a, a, guy, a guy had messaged me and he was like, he was like, I'm into older women. And I was like, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm 30. I'm 30. <laughs> uh, and and he was, and I, I like, I think I just didn't get it because I probably just with my white hair, like look really like older, maybe he was just referencing my hair, but anyway, so I retold that story in TikTok, like it was at night and there wasn't daylighting and it was just like me and my, like a band t-shirt and just like day old makeup, like where my eyeliner started to like, look like eyeshadow, just fading into everything. Um, and I had just like, th- it was just a throwaway video. I was just like, oh my gosh, I uh, recently matched with a guy and he told me that he's into, he's into older women. And then my punchline w- was like, I'm 30. And then I just kind of made a face like a <laughs> Jim Halpert face. Nice. And, you know, that, that'll, that'll punch. And, and then it kind of just, it just blew up. And all day the next day, I was just like, and this was only 100,000 views. And it took, I spent a whole day like looking at comments and getting notifications and reading through comments. And at first I was like, this is kind of fun. And then, and then after a while, the comments were just really getting to me. I was like, uh, like at first I was like re- replying to them and agreeing and they were like, drink water. And I was like, haha, you're right. And like, they'd be like, you aged poorly. And I was like, 2020 was a rough year. Like I was just like responding oh, nice. to okay. like witty things. And I was yeah. like, I'm not going to let bullying get the best of me right and then it was just like after 500 of those comments it was just rough so I, I can't imagine how people who get millions and millions of views on like every video I'm like I don't know how they do that dude yeah. I don't know either I yeah, don't then know I either. deleted the video and then I deleted my account oh I'm so sorry well I don't know if I'm sorry that you deleted your TikTok account because I yeah. I be TikToking sometimes yeah but I don't make videos on there well actually I made a couple. I tried to do impressions and sort nice. of did some impressions on there. But yeah. after that, I was like, eh, this is taking up a lot of time. And I don't really, I, I wasn't getting the likes. Maybe if I dyed my hair white and then did impressions. I mean, maybe. if you talk about your age and you're a woman, you may, you may just blow up from people wanting to bully you. So oh, I could God. recommend that. Well, I'm so what? sorry. I'm so sorry. And I'm so sorry that yeah, they you know. convinced you to change your hair you should change it back well i don't want to put it all on them it's you know during the quarantine it's hard to you know the pandemic it's hard to really like get to a you know obviously like a stylist and with blonde hair you know i don't want to do it and it's a lot and so it's nice to just go back to like this is what eh, kind of around my hair color so it's it's low maintenance so that's that's mostly i'm just gonna say it's that's the reason i'm glad you didn't shave your head i think yeah i mean made you look younger i've thought actually. about it i've thought about it i'm i'd be i'm self-conscious about my head shape why i think that? it's too big i think it's too big oh i know that you and i we haven't met each other in person yet but my head is ginormous i've got a big old croatian head and i don't know if the doctor got me out wrong with the spoons <laughs> but i've got a little bu- an alien bump right Whoa. here yeah, Whoa. it's disgusting. So I'm what? so even if we I all went, have, I have a bump. We all have bumps. No, 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 no. <laughs> are you are you talking about the yeah. the little concave yeah, yeah, yeah. dip? Yeah, yeah. That's no. Not that. I have that plus a little. It's it's okay. I I don't even want to call it a bump. It's almost like a sharp, you know the the thing that the doctor um, yeah. h- hits against your knees to test your reflexes. Yeah, the the, the hitty thing. The hit, that's the technical term, the hitty thing. That's the back of my head. Oh. Same color too. Like a you rubber. Have to, you've described this before. 
This is actually the first time I've described oh, is it? it. Okay. Because I'm absolutely on. ashamed of it. But oh. yeah, so uh, even if I go bald, completely bald on top, I'm going to keep the ring <laughs> around just to protect it. I might just you, keep the ponytail. Stefan, you do you. You do you. Whatever you want to do. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll just keep the little patch of hair around that bump so nobody can see it. A rat tail. Mm. I support whatever decision you make. I've never done a rat tail before, but I'm not Do opposed it. to doing it. Life is short and, you know. So are rats. So. And so it makes sense. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, Jen, this is a great introduction. And everybody that's listening, if you haven't read the show notes yet, we've got, and by we, I mean me, Jen Girallo, improv extraordinaire. She's performed at multiple improv festivals, including the Denver Improv Festival, the Laugh Riot Improv Festival, and more. She just got into stand-up a wee bit ago. She's part of the duo of Wedding Party, and she's also the host of Beesh Don't, the podcast. So Jen, let me give you another welcome. I welcomed you already once, but I feel like it. I, I want to give you more warmth and, and love since the comments in the TikTok video, they kind of really... <laughs> brought me down too. Did it? A little bit. I feel bad. Oh. I feel bad. <laughs> Sorry. I started like that. I didn't mean to bring the host down. I'm going to, you know what? I'll do it like a Quentin Tarantino flick where I'll edit it. <laughs> bring it back. Yeah. It... Thank you for the welcome. It's cool to hear yourself when someone else introduces you. Like, oh, that's, a, that's an did, ego boost. Did you like it? I was trying to make it. Yeah. Know, I'm like, how did he know all that? But it's all out there. But I'm like, you know, I'm like, I mean, I, I wrote a bio and posted it a little bit ago, but I'm like, I'm like, oh, this is like, as you're describing, I'm like, this person sounds pretty cool. And I'm like, oh, that's me. That's pretty cool. It is pretty darn cool. And I it mean, you've nice. been doing improv for quite a few years. Yeah. What got you into, it seems like you're just a little little comedy lover so how did you get mm -hmm. into comedy in the first place and and was it improv that really sparked that joy <laughs> yes that, I... i'm so sorry about that i'll never why do the eyebrow what? thing again oh I, yeah no I thought it was... hold on i think i, I can do I the way wow yeah such control yeah i wish i could do that but you wouldn't be able to see it because i have curtain bangs <laughs> I did see just, just hiding your true hiding behind self. my glasses and my bangs. I did uh, do a TikTok video of it, but it got so much hate that I, <laughs> I had white eyebrows, but I dyed them brown. So I, that would be badass. Uh, okay. Well, enough. they say not to touch your eyebrows. So don't, I wouldn't, I mean, why they say not to touch your eyebrows with, with dyes and stuff. They're too close to your eyes. Ah. Okay. The chemicals. That, that, what? That, that makes a hundred percent sense. Yeah. sense. Yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, so <laughs> I, whenever people ask me about comedy, I always like to say, uh, um, I got into comedy because I didn't get enough attention as a child, and that's it's not it's not wrong, you know. Uh, I'm a middle child, so that probably wouldn't surprise you. Oh boy, yeah. I think I heard you on your podcast. Beesh, don't. Mm -hmm. I love Beach, by the way. Really? Sorry to sidetrack, but yes, it just sounds so elegant yeah. or something. Am I even pronouncing it right? Is it Beach or Bish? I say Bish. Okay. All right. I okay. like Beach a little bit better. I mean, it sounds I like, like, yeah, I love the way you said it. Yeah. It's like you're at a restaurant and you're like, I'll have a side of the Beach, please. <laughs> so I, I really like I'll that. run it. I'll run it by Alex. I'll run it by Alex. Yeah. Yes. Please run it by your co-host. Yeah. Uh, Although Bish is fine. I feel like Bish, Bish almost sounds like dish, but it sounds like you'd get I think it at it's a supposed diner. To be, it's supposed to be like bitch. Oh, I know. I know. Oh, but okay, I'm, okay, I'm, okay. I'm morphing it into a word of its own because. <laughs> oh, good. I kind of, I do like Bish. I don't know what it means, but I like it. Yeah, Bish. But words are made up, so we can make them whatever we want. Exactly. Who yeah. decided to make bitch Bish anyway? Or Bish? Um, I don't actually know. Um, oh, yeah. I'm so sorry. We're out of time. And oh my the, the, the correct answer is Alex Trebek. He actually, he was so frustrated at one of the contestants that he was like, Bish, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's how it worked. Yeah. So anyway, but that's yeah. our trivia portion of the podcast back to you. So you were a middle child 
was it brother you brother or sister you sister, what was the combo sister two two sisters oh yeah um yeah i uh and then i so i yeah i definitely wanted to i think i was looking to i i loved acting in in high school i was a drama nerd um and i think what since i was even younger before that i loved being funny i loved watching saturday night live i wanted to be a comedian when i was younger and did you joke around with your sisters or were you just mm -hmm. totally so okay okay because yeah. i had i have two brothers and we would joke around all the time and so mm -hmm. we would play off of each other and we were kind of best friends even though i gave them wedgies and stuff but it was all funny they laughed with what us. like order is it uh so i was oldest i am oldest and then my brother christopher amel mangini satani and then anthony dominic mangini satani after that wow yeah yeah are those middle names you're saying that's one full name that's just, wait say it they say blend it, it all together christopher amel mangini satani it's like okay did you ever read Tiki Tiki Tembo, No So Rambo, Chari Bari Bucha, Pip Peri Pembo? No. Okay, then I'll edit that part out. But it was about <laughs> a book about you shouldn't have long names. But no, my oh. mom, she wanted us to have her maiden name too. So I am Stefan. And it's like a half and half, almost mm -hmm. like a black and white cookie, except like American Italian, where it's like Stefan Joseph Mongini Settani. And wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So. Uh, I wish I had a really cool name. What's your middle name? Lynn. Oh, okay. Lynn. That's, that's really, uh, yeah, that's, that's the reaction. You know, that's appropriate. Just that's like, uh, oh. something I'm reaching for a compliment for. Um, Lynn. Oh. It's a good, no, no. Lynn <laughs> is like a good assist name. I feel like maybe you could pull off a Jenny Lynn if you wanted oh, to. Yeah. Yeah. J Lynn, maybe. J Lynn. That's cool. Yeah. There's Jennifer, some stuff you could do with, yeah. There's Jennifer Lynn. It's very moldable. It's 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 good in a lot it of is. different places. It but is. anyway, so uh, you, you so were... yeah, I I was really into theater. I like. I mean, if I could be in musicals, uh, you know, I would. But I can't sing or dance. And if oh. I could be in plays, I would. But I don't like memorizing things. Mm. So <laughs> improv, <laughs> improv was just such a beautiful combination of theater um not memorizing anything and and comedy and so i i was just kind of dabbling in it and then a few years ago i started like really diving into it taking classes and meshing myself in the community just showing up every weekend doing as many shows as possible doing festivals which i i had always wanted to do but never did and finally just like focused my attention on it what a realized, beautiful word, by the way, meshing yourself in with the community. Yes, you know? yes. Um, that's how it's like I I threw myself in a couple of years ago by like attending every weekend. That was a little more violent of a word, but that's good too. Yeah, throwing yourself th into it. <laughs> and it feels like it feels like almost like um visiting, it's like when you're trying to learn a new language, when you just like live in the in in within the place where the language is, you would probably pick it up a lot more if you listened to, you know, TV and and music of that language. You'd probably pick it up a lot more than just like casually, you know, you know, trying to learn it. Like just throwing yourself into that, you know, community right. to like learn it. So I feel like I did that with improv, and I just exponentially learned so much more by by doing that and were you in phoenix yeah. or were you in another location i was then? here yeah okay yeah. were you yeah. were you born and raised here san diego phoenix? actually yeah oh oh but <laughs> san diego. my bad didn't realize yeah. i was yeah, yeah the way you said it it's yeah. san diego actually. san diego actually <laughs> oh <laughs> my yeah. my bad okay yeah. sorry so dirty Venetian here yeah california little place little place called california um, no, but I was like 10. I was like 10 when I moved out here. So yeah, it, it still counts though. You still get to have the era of, I was just in San Diego, San Diego, San Diego. Yeah. Actually, yeah. actually San Diego comma, actually, <laughs> and you were raised, you were raised here was raised. Well, in, in that room, I was yeah, right here. 
Actually, my mom is right over there. I respect mom. your mom so much. Ma, she respects you. No, How um, do you guys have that accent. I don't know. We just do it. We speak, we actually, we speak in Italian sometimes. Mm, okay. Yeah. But, but uh, not, yeah. not this time because you wouldn't understand and it's, it's weird. But well, I'm Italian. <laughs> I don't know. I, I understand. Yeah. Davvero? Parli italiano? No, I don't know. Any of that. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. You're well, like, oh yeah, you speak. Um, I, I actually, I learned to get real fluent by, I threw myself into an Italian community in Ferrara, Italy. You're right. I lived there for two, no, I was going to say two years. I just lived there <laughs> in 2009. So. <laughs> oh damn. I was going to sing happy birthday to you. <laughs> yeah, I, that's what I, yes. If you want to throw a happy birthday at me. It's just going to be happy birthday, but in an Italian accent, I can still do it. <laughs> hey, I'm, happy birthday. To, I don't know. I, Why did, that wasn't Italian at all. That was just East Coast a little bit. <laughs> I think it was from San Diego, actually. 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 <laughs> actually. But it was, it was beautiful. But um, yeah, raised in Cottonwood, Arizona on a actually, farm. Actually, Cottonwood, uh, actually. Yeah, I, it was more like, actually. Cottonwood, Arizona. Very cool. That's, no, you don't have to feign that's interest. Nice. That's no, that's nice. It's um very moldable. You know, it's very moldable. It's like the Lynn of Arizona. It's the Lynn. It's it's in the middle of nowhere, and uh, no one really talks about it unless you ask about it or bring it up. So, yeah. and yeah, it's it's just I think there were around. I mean, I had a band that was cool. And Whoa. everyone thought we were heavy metal, even though we were pop punk. Because they're, they're like, that's not country, that's the devil. And I'm like, <laughs> it's kind of like Blink-182. And they're like, I blink one time per second. All right. So it was it was a weird conversation. No one tells me how many times to blink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is a free country, God dang it. So, yeah. Anyway, but that was my life. So you, San Diego, moved here. We're getting into right. improv through yourself into the improv community. What was the improv community like when you threw yourself into it? Was it a it big a and- couple couple years ago? I mean, I had I had you know started it here in this community in two thousand nine. Um, then I was happy doing birthday. It- thank you, thank you. I was doing it in college, a little college called Arizona State University. <laughs> oh, actually, high five. We are. And, uh, yeah. All right. Where? Which? Which? What'd you? what you study? Tell me about it. I, stu- I studied languages. Yeah. No way. <laughs> did you? I did. I did. Wow. What does I, that mean? I studied. <laughs> I didn't learn how to speak them. I just studied them. Studied them. I, I studied Italian because I wanted to be an Italian teacher, and so that's how I ended up studying abroad and living in Italy. And then I also studied Spanish. I thought you were joking. I thought you were joking about. <laughs> Oh, no, no, I, I speak Italian fluently. And I also speak Brazilian <laughs> Portuguese fluently. That's amazing. Yes, yeah, so my wow. Chinese is a little my Mandarin is a little bit rusty, but I worked at Rosetta Stone when I lived on the East Coast. So I, um, I picked up a couple languages through that. It was really cool. I was the top selling stoner in the whole country. <laughs> because I spoke several languages and then people would be like, how many languages do you speak? And then I'd be like, four. And they'd be like, oh, wow, I want to buy one. So then I, yeah, I'd sell them. So it was pretty cool. That's all truth, by the way. I usually Wait, lie by really, that point, but yeah. They true. really call them stoners? No, no. <laughs> all right, stoners, let's party. Yeah, let's sell those stones. No. <laughs> I think they'd be around longer if they did do that, though, because I would yeah. love to be the top selling stoner in the whole country. <laughs> that would be so sweet. I couldn't look farther from a stoner when I was there. I did not have the ponytail. This was 2011. And I was wearing a bright yellow button up shirt with khaki pants. Whoa. And I looked like if if the man in the yellow hat just popped off the page and decided From curious George. Yeah. And decided to sell Rosetta stones. He was like, curious Giorgio, come here. Vieni, vieni. How so, do we know he didn't do that though? Do we know what he did? 
Was no. he a zoo, was he a zookeeper? What did he do? I was I don't know. I have you know what next week on the podcast he's the next okay. guest, so I will interview him oh, and good. ask him. Thank you so much. What do you do, man in the yellow hat? He's I'll like, do you want in. do you want to know my name? No, 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 no. Occupation first. Usually please. people want to know my name. <laughs> uh so and then okay, so you said what was the improv community like? Um, yes. So yes. I auditioned. I got to audition for a house team, a regularly, a regularly, cool, uh, a regularly performing team um, at Torch Theater doing long form improv. Nice. So that got, and I got on that team. And so I got to rehearse and perform every weekend. I got to rehearse with a coach giving me notes and just like really getting better from there. And then performing on other teams wherever I could. Um, I have yeah. questions for you. Yeah. And for the yeah. audience, for the audience too, for people that don't know improv that much. So long form improv and correct right. me, Jen, that's like what you might see. The, I think the Netflix show Middle Ditch and Schwartz, Schwartz exactly. where yes. they just take something from the audience and then they go for yeah. extended periods of time. It's yeah. We, we kind of also describe it as like a play, kind of like a made up, uh, an improvised play because that kind of makes sense because we do tie in ah, yeah, these characters yeah. and you know sometimes by the end of it people are like you made that up like you guys probably scripted that right and it's like yeah we're just kind of in these characters and that's in this moment so cool and and so that's a lot different than like what people might have seen at um whose line is it anyway which is is that just called short term or short term? short short form <laughs> short term <yeah. laughs> <laughs> sure. it's just a shorter term yeah, yeah. Short, short form yeah you're suffering from short-term improv i give yeah. you three to six yeah. weeks new to improvise <laughs> uh so yeah it that's like uh I, also another way to describe it is that short form is the game the game of the scene the weird thing that's happening the circumstance mm -hmm. is already defined by either the director um, or the game itself, how the, so the audience is in on the game beforehand in short form. And that's whose line, like, you know, they would come out and be like, okay, this game's called new choice. And I'm going to say new choice at any, any point in the scene. Mm -hmm. um, and the audience knows already, but in long form, the game of the scene is going to be discovered by, by the players, you know, uh, during, during the set and the audience will discover that as well, but it's not as defined. Got it. Cause it's more like a scenario or something where, or setting the scene that the audience gives that suggestion, you guys take it and yeah. then you develop characters, you develop the, everything. the game, you develop yep. kind of everything, which is really yeah. cool to me. And also terrifying because I feel yeah. like if you're doing short form improv, right. it's almost like you have something given to you. You're allowed yes. to play around with it. And then if yes. you mess up next, and then it's kind of the next thing, but it True. seems like creating this very long and intricate story. Yes. You can't have those lulls, no lulls. Oh, well, it's- Or can you? That's the thing is in long form, oh. it's a little more patient. And so there's a little bit more room to breathe. Um, oh. And there's less pressure to say a joke or say something, you know, be really quick right oh. you can let it let it develop I mean it's kind of in that name a little bit but in short form yeah it's it's for me it's it's not something I I'm drawn to because it's sure. a little bit more pressure to if you're if the entire game is two minutes uh that's a lot of pressure to mm. throw in a lot of lines there's no lulls there you know it's it's high energy and I think audiences sometimes um, enjoy that more or get it more, you know, because like it's the game is understood off the top, whereas long form can be super patient and like, like just developed and, and slow. It can be really slow. Sometimes it can be really fast as well, but yeah, it can be more patient. When it's uh, interesting. And then do the, as long form starts to develop when you're in the thick of it, where there, there might That's be a little what, more lulls, whether a lot yeah. more lulls in the short form, the, 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 I don't, I don't even want to see the lulls. I think that might be a bad term. Cause I don't know if I'm defining it correctly, but like it could be where instead of funny, it might be interesting or a step to further develop or 
or something like that? Yeah. Um, well, something that I really love is that in improv, you know, the goal is kind of not to try to be funny, right? Mm, I see. And the, the funny will come, especially in long form, the funny, you know, will be, will be there after you establish the base reality and then play and then find that unusual thing and then play on that and heighten it from there and explore these characters. And you're right. Sometimes it's just going to be a, an, an improvised discovery and tied in theme. And it's going to be something really interesting happens that maybe you're not, you know, laughing the hardest you've ever laughed, but right. it's kind of magical that they discovered this story and this arc and this tie together yeah. Yeah. tying these worlds together. Something that I, last summer I got to um, do some online classes, online improv classes that there a lot of theaters are offering right now. So I highly recommend taking oh, nice. advantage of like people's improv theater is doing classes online and Rise Comedy in Denver is doing improv. So people's improv theaters in New York and Rise Comedies in Denver and Westside Comedy Theater is in LA. And so I've been taking classes from them online. And of course, our local folks uh, in Arizona are doing online classes as well. But but yeah, those folks have been doing online classes. And, and in 2020, I got to take like a dramatic improv class. And so, and then I took a bunch, I took some one-on-one -on -one studying. I took like, I just like broadened, I took a lot of classes on like specifics or character classes and specifics and breaking down these techniques in improv and something like a dramatic improv class really expanded my skill set to mm -hmm. make me a more well-rounded performer maybe I'm not going to be like focused in doing dramatic improv but all these things are shaping you as a, com a comedic performer right. so so I'm actually, you know, tomorrow I'm taking with Rise Comedy, I'm, I'm taking an online voiceover class. And maybe I'm not going to be a professional voiceover artist, but that can shape me in terms of, you know, maybe my voice acting in improv or, you know, just paying attention to this instrument we have of our, you know, our voice. And that's not something I really played around with on stage before the, all this. And so I'm just trying to branch out into that. Same with stand-up comedy. I just started stand-up comedy early 2020 and learning the techniques in that has helped me become a better improviser because yeah. the skills in that transfer and likewise my improv skills have helped me become, you know, a better joke writer or right, um, right. You know, comedian. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure with the stage presence, that's really helped too. Yeah, that's super helpful. Yeah. 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 Getting getting past kind of, you know, talking with a microphone or being on stage in general. Uh, super scary to be by yourself and stand up, whereas in improv, it's a team sport usually. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. Mm -hmm. And that's then performing, it's so different because it's like you're performing your own work that you pre wrote and you practiced, and it's just you. And yeah. so there's something super terrifying about stand up in that sense, but also very rewarding. Yeah, that's true. High risk, high reward. And yes, yes. It's, it's, yeah, it's definitely very interesting, a, a blend between the two. But yeah, that, um, oh, man, and I was going to ask you one more question, but I forgot, but maybe it'll come back to me. No, it didn't. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, anyway, Jen, was, oh, I was going to ask you, what, what about the audition? What is it like to audition yes. for a, long, a, a an improv group or troop? Is it a troop? Yes, I've heard troop. I've also heard group. <laughs> Okay. There's no wrong answers, just like an improv. Oh, um, that's the lesson we've learned today. That's beautiful. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Um, so you get to like warm up together. You know, you do some warm up games to kind of get you all like present and in the moment and maybe loose and creative energy, kind of get the energy up. Mm -hmm. And and then for long form, we did we just do a bunch of scenes together. And sometimes you get coaching from the panel to see how you incorporate notes or, you know, how you're able to incorporate that right away. I think just like maybe an actor might get that in auditions when they, when they're told to improvise as well. Uh, and, and just seeing how, what kind of, um, 
what kind of performer you all you are. So we all bring different strengths to the table and, um, you know, see if you're a, you're a supportive player or, you know, also, or, you know, what kind of, uh, what, you know, you can kind of see the skills that you're implementing in scenes. So do you establish a base reality? Do you agree to the circumstances? Are you adding information? Are you um, discovering, you know, are you pointing out the unusual thing and kind of heightening that? So I think nice. it's like seeing those skills. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. I The thing that I forgot that w it wasn't even a question, it was actually just an observation. I think that you are going to like voice acting and you have a pretty good voice for voice acting as well. I Thank did you. that when I was in New York and I did took you? classes, got my voice acting demo. I think I've talked about it before on this podcast, but if you guys want to hear it, I will release it to the public. It's, I would say embarrassing is my word for it, but it was kind of cool. I got to do a voiceover reel of commercials. And so doing like Jack Link's beef jerky and Gatorade, I think was one of them. I was showcasing my emotions and then oh, I, I'll let you listen to it. It's yeah. Nice. Um, but it's very interesting. I loved it. I, so I, I used to, uh, my, something I did not like the most about me used to be my voice. And so it's really weird to me to not only accept my voice and come to love my voice, but now past me would be just like shocked and in awe that I have a podcast, I'm on podcasts and I'm performing using just my voice, which would just not be something I ever thought I'd do because I did not like my voice for the longest time. Hmm. And uh, I think voice, I, I did a drop-in class with Real Voices LA Nice. on on voiceover and I'm also a communications professional um in my uh, for for a day job and I feel like you need to say actually after that one too actually I'm a communications <laughs> professional actually yeah so um we and we do videos and we write we write scripts for voiceover and it was very helpful to watch actors dissect a script and the specs that they got in terms of whether it's warm or authentic, the emotions that you just mm. said, and watch them dissect the beats and the words and the voiceover and the choices they were making. So as a writer, I, as I'm telling is like to, it shapes you in ways we don't even know to try other things. Like that's shaping me as a writer, but also maybe someday, I, you know, I would, I would do some voiceover, but it's also shaping me as a podcaster, you know, too. Right, right. Yeah. I remember listening to myself as a podcaster. In fact, I deleted the first, I took them off the air, the first Did 40 you? episodes. Yeah. Wow. Because I sound Why? awful. Yeah. What, but, oh, was there anything about it? Well, I mean, I had gray hair at the time. So no, I'm kidding. Okay. I No, I, I, I just didn't sound excited. I didn't sound engaged. Mm -hmm. I sounded like a doofus. And so I was like, mm -hmm. if I have people, cause I would look at the analytics and see where people go, which they'll, they might listen to an episode. One of the latest ones, they're like, oh, I want to start from the beginning. And so they'll start from the beginning and they'll be like, this is hot garbage. And so maybe it's not. And, and I, I don't think that it's bad that I was worse than I am now, but I think that it is, and, and that's not the only reason I took it off. The reason that I really took it off was because I didn't want listeners, especially new ones, to go into that and then say, oh, I'm turning this off and not giving it another chance because of the earlier episodes, so. I think that's a really good point that you bring up in terms of like, yeah, maybe we're gonna look back and, you know, it's it's really cool. I, I think it's important that we're, it's good that we're better than we were when we first started it. I like that. Sure. Like, I like that you brought that up. Like, and just to be like, you know, compassionate with ourselves and be like, yeah, well, I've been doing it longer. So obviously I'm better at this and we're not going to be like, you know, perfect at something when we start it. So yeah, I yeah. feel the same about anything. I mean, I struggle with that in stand up. Like I just started it and I'm like, I already expect like, 
when I'm writing, I'm writing for a Netflix special. And I'm like, hey, I got to start at open mics. What am I doing? <laughs> you know? Exactly. We have to be patient with ourselves and we have to be forgiving of ourselves because it, it's such a bittersweet thing where you go and look at yourself from years prior and you go and you cringe, but it's great. It, you said it. It's great because you're like, wow, look, I've grown from, from where I am. And and to that point, when you just first start out, just like you said, be forgiving of yourself and be understanding that you are just starting out and it's not going to be perfect. You're going to have to eat your frog. Yeah. No, not eat your frog. You're going to have to, um, that was a weird metaphor. Eat the frog is, is a metaphor though. It is, but it's like you it's have to do, do the, the hard, hard things that's first. Doing, yeah. yeah. That's... You're, yeah, you're going to have to eat some sort Words of Words are whatever we make them. So. You're, Yes, you're going to have to eat some beesh before you mm. dine mm. on right. a dime. I don't they, know. They do I'm say going. that. They do say that. They say it in Cottonwood all the time. <laughs> yeah. And they don't blink at you either. Yeah. I like how you adjust your mic sometimes. Well, I have a very, I, I, this is a low budget podcast. So this thing, as you can see, I put it up here and then it oh, starts it to falls. slowly fall. Okay. So I thought yeah. it was like a technique. Yeah, I, I actually, I just get so, I change sometimes. As you see, sometimes I go upside down and it just keeps me fresh and keeps me animated. That's yeah. what I love about okay. it. Okay. Well, but, I'll, I might take some pointers from you and do that. Hey, yeah, do it. And then I'm actually, I'm not sitting in a chair right now. I'm actually just squatting because it keeps the- You're the just squatting. Yeah, I'm just doing an air squat because I, I love it. But no, I wanted, thank you, Jen, for this wonderful door into your life, unfurling the bangs so we could see closer into the Jen Giralo story. <laughs> Opening up those mini curtains. Now we're going to, because this is a comedy advice podcast where we give advice with some comedy so there are some questions that some fans have sent in that we're going to answer about some of the silliest things you might have imagined okay but I, so before we get into those though i usually like to get us nice and jazzed inspired kind of a warm-up with an inspirational quote so we can feel nice and inspired okay to get through these questions so jen i wanted to ask you first do you have any inspirational quotes that you lean back on or, or lean to when you're having those tough days when you go viral on TikTok and then you get <laughs> mounds mm. of comments? Yeah. Um, does, can it be like a self-help like quote? Of course. A absolutely. Are, are there any other kinds? <laughs> a self-destructive quote. Well, no. maybe like celebrities give quotes. I feel like that's inspirational or, you know, or poets, you know, sometimes, I don't know. That's the bigger oh, one. Inspirational quotes. That's fair. Yeah. No, it can be whatever you desire. Jen. Okay. Well, I don't know if it's going to be inspirational for everyone. That's fine. so that's fine. So if it's not, uh, I'll cut it out. <laughs> so mine is mine is this time I'll be different. And oh. And I read about like codependency and um, went through a lot of uh, codependency uh, in, in therapy, talked about it a lot in therapy. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes a caretaker or codependent will say, this time they'll be different. This time the situation will be different. You know, it's, it's, they'll be different. It's okay. That's, they're not usually like this. They'll be different. Uh, and an empowering way to rephrase that and a truer statement is this time I'll be different because the only thing we can change is ourselves and how we, how we approach things, our perspective on it, um, how we react to things and how we treat people. So that's really the only thing we can control and we can't control other people. I adore that. And I feel inspired already because oh, good. one of the biggest things that I think I've said it on this podcast. Well, I need to stop saying that because I probably said everything on this podcast. Sorry, Ma. But I think that one of the biggest things for me, one of the, it's not even a quote, but just an idea that I think that quote encapsulates is that you are responsible for 100% of the things that happen to you. I'm not saying it's your fault, but you are responsible for how you feel 
and and for how you react to the situation and how you decide to deal with it. Because there's a whole bunch of things that happen to us that are not fair. For example, I wanted to be an only child, but mom and dad had other ideas. The TV was broken and two more popped out. No, four more popped out. That's just how it is. But I oh. am responsible for how I deal with the situation and for everything that happens to me. And so I think that next time I'll be different is a great way to put responsibility on yourself, which can help you change things. Because if you just say, oh, they'll be different or this person will be, this thing will change, then you're taking the responsibility off and you're just hoping at that point. So. Yeah, I think it's really important to know that it's it's really liberating to feel that you're really not responsible for how other people's how, uh, how other people feel or how other people's emotions, you know, just like we're responsible for what happened, like our emotions and how we, how we perceive things and how we navigate that emotionally and how we treat people. We're responsible for that a hundred percent, but that's like, we're not responsible for how other people treat other yes. people and like how yes. they feel if they're sad, if they're happy, yes. we're not, they're responsible for that. And, and I would get that confused. I would think that I was responsible for someone's happiness or their sadness. Uh, if they were sad or angry, oh, it's my fault, right? I can control that. And I just, I, I can't. Damn. I can't believe your hair didn't turn gray naturally. Cause that's a lot of responsibility. That is a lot Ugh. of stress, Jen. Yeah. It, I mean, I'm, I'm look, look at me now, you know, stress-free. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's hard to, I'm still navigating that, but I, I carried that around and a lot of people carried around and they feel, they feel like they're responsible for other people. And it's been a weight lifted off of me. It's still, it's still conditioned in me. So I still have to fight that. Like if I sure. get my, like mindless, I still feel like, Oh, I have to over explain myself or, I mean, it's really powerful in that I'm not responsible for how people um, interpret things too. Uh, I'm going to be kind and considerate and respectful, but ultimately like they, other people have to, um, other people are responsible for interpreting my message and, right. and they are, they need to follow up with me if they, if they feel hurt by what I said, and then I will take accountability for that. But if they don't, then I can assume that I didn't disrespect them or hurt them. And I think in my mind, I thought I would just ruminate over the things I said all the time. I would just beat myself up over that stupid thing I said, right? Because, oh my God, they're probably thinking I'm, I'm so stupid. And they're probably thinking that I, I, was, I was mean to them. I didn't mean it like that. In my head, I would just do all that. And it's, people aren't thinking like that. People aren't, they're not thinking about the thing I said, that dumb thing I said, you know? Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree. And it's, have you ever heard of the different personality types where they just simplify it by color with four different mm -hmm. colors? I think so. I think so. I think you might be a blue as okay. a primary color, which we what all exemplify. It means you're depressed as fuck. No, it's <laughs> I, why, I, why I, bother? <laughs> I'm, I'm a blue as well as my primary, but what it is, is it's, they characterize it as there are a lot of different things that I'm not going to remember, but mainly it's you are very cognizant of, of other people's feelings. And so, and you, you try to care for other people and you are really good at reading other people as well, but you also are kind of a people pleaser and you like to make them happy. And so you might go, and sacrifice some of your joy to make them happy. And so yes, that is that yes, that's, that's yes. me as well. And so I'm I, working on it. As you're saying these things, it's hitting me right in the feels. Yeah. So. I used to get people pleaser a lot on mm -hmm. personality assessments. Mm -hmm. I got harmonizer, people pleaser, um, perfectionist. And for a long time I thought, oh, these are my traits. These are what the personality assessments are saying. And now I'm seeing them for what they are, which is toxic traits of mine that I, I was conditioned to do. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that's something I'm working on. I'm working. I don't, being a people pleaser 
is not something I want to be like identified as, but a hundred percent that was me. Yeah. And yeah. and the beautiful thing about with this personality test where it shows the different colors, you are a certain percentage of all four colors. Right. So where blue is very uh, empathetic and cares about people, which isn't all bad, but getting into people pleaser right. and being a doormat is bad. But then there's also gold, which is also the person that always tries to follow rules and no matter what, and is very process oriented. Then there's orange, which is more entrepreneurial kind of disregards rules and doesn't like authority. And then there's green, which is very data focused fact check checker type and stuff. And so mm. my two were blue and go and orange, but, but anyway, you can mm. also fluctuate. So like a year from now, I might be a little bit different because you can grow. Sometimes there are people that are just built like I'm so somebody might be 80% green, or I don't think you can get be 80%, but like 40% green. Uh, and they're all data focused. Mm. But yeah, it's really cool. I fans, like that. If you're listening, fans, and you have specific colors, let me know which colors you are. Or not. I don't really care. I do care. I'm a blue. I care so much. <laughs> we care. We care. We we'll care. Read, we'll, we'll read through all the comments. We will. We'll tag you. Oh, God. All right. So, Jen beautiful quote thank you it was actually almost too beautiful because i've got this quote right here of my own and it's not by any gandhi or dr seuss it's by inspirobot which is a robot that takes ai and it, it takes some of the wisest words known to man or woo man and then just meshes them together for a beautiful inspirational quote i'm really ready for this okay i'm glad this quote from Inspire About This Week, it says, <clears throat> grow up as if your father was your doctor. Hmm. <laughs> what? <laughs> Inspire About, there's still some kinks that need to be worked oh, out okay. with Inspire okay. About. But it says, grow up as if your father was your doctor. Jen, what is that? What is, how does that inspire you? What does that say to you? Um, my doctor would be like, you're not hurt. Throw some dirt on it. You think that's, you think that's hurt. One time I broke my arm in three places. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like, I feel like, like grow up, grow up, grow up tough. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, I, I, apparently you don't have to see your dad that often maybe once a year tops just to make sure everything's okay um i think maybe if your dad says something let him know i want a second opinion and then go to mom see what she thinks um what else uh, in order you to talk to your dad you have to have um a high deductible plan make sure your dad's on your insurance right yeah, make in sure network. he's in, in network, network. Because if he's not, it's going to be a bundle. Ooh, I a bundle. I love uh, it. I love a good American health insurance jab. <laughs> <laughs> As so do bad. I. As do I. Um, what else? Anything else? Father was a doctor. You get a candy after you see him every time? He's always like, like you have to be on time, but like he doesn't have to be on time. <laughs> Oh, that's good. I like that. And um, yeah, I think that's it. I'm inspired. Yeah. I don't know about yeah. you, Jen. Oh, yeah. I'm, I've, I've never felt so alive. Okay, good. Because we're about to dive into some questions, throw okay. ourselves throw into ourselves. some questions. We've got this first one. It's sent in by fan Danielle. Thank you, Danielle. She found it on Reddit. It says, Shout out, well, well, Shout out to Danielle. Thank you, Danielle. It says, how do I act at a party where I don't know anyone? So, oh I met up, so I met up with a girl from Tindare last week and we really hit it off well. She invited me to her friend's birthday party this weekend, which I agreed to go to. The only issue is I've never been to a party where I don't know anyone before. She says there will be only about a dozen people or so, but of course I'll be a stranger to all of them. So I need help regarding the following. 
how do I go about introducing myself to every one of her friends and behaving at the party since I've never met them before and barely know her myself? And two, the parties I've been to were all close friends, which usually lead me to being able to spend the night at their places. Would it be rude if I, of me to stay at the host's place for the night? Any help would be greatly appreciated. So, Jen. So, a comedy, like, is this, do you want a comedic answer? Do you want a real answer? Jen, however you feel like answering, answer. Mm -hmm. Don't try and be funny. And it'll be funny. <laughs> God. <laughs> it's like sleep and boners. It's just the more you try, the harder it becomes. Okay. This is news to me. I didn't, I don't, you're educating me. Sleep? Wait, sleep? Well, the the second with boners, you said. Oh, boner. I, well, I guess don't, if you try too hard. I don't know. I don't, I, I was sleep just saying something try, that my mom okay. told me. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so my, my comedic answer would be play the game Party Quirks from Whose Line Is It Anyway, where you assign yourself a character and you stay in character that whole party. Um, you just drive home that one thing, that motivation, and you just play that objective the whole time. Maybe so who, the object, go ahead. Maybe go the ahead. objective. Maybe the objective is real, uh, or to you, or maybe the objective is something quirky like the game, which mm -hmm. someone slowly turning into Abraham Lincoln. No, I don't know. Maybe the people at the party will think that's really entertaining. Or maybe they'll shoot you in the back of the head. Who knows? They might. They might. I don't know. Uh, the, the real answer is this person seems, if, you know, if they're inviting you to a party with their friends, they seem already interested in who you are. And so be completely yourself as possible. Don't try to be someone else because that's not, that's not who they're inviting to the party. They're inviting you and be confident in that and ask questions be interested in these these the friends and they will reciprocate and be interested in you and go in with very uh realistic expectations in terms of of have you know this you know be realistic with yourself this is this this is a an, an anxious situation and lower the stakes you can do this give yourself a pep talk and and go into it taking care of yourself. What do I need uh, to make myself feel less anxious? Take care of yourself. If I don't feel like socializing, I'm not going to socialize. If I want to go up to someone, ask, ask them a question, ask them a question. If I'm hungry, I'm going to go get some food. That's pretty much it. Yeah, that's beautiful. I think that asking the questions is you're, you're going to, because you could have topics, pre-prepared topics, mm. write them on your hand just in case you forget, but watch a Netflix documentary. I feel like that's going to be really important. Ooh. So then when people are just looking at their phones, you'd be like, have you guys seen what the food or whatever it's called? And then you can talk about a food documentary and how everything everyone's eating is poison. So that'll mm. be very upbringing. I think you could also Good, with yeah. the questions, just ask questions. That's how I get through everything. That's how I get through my podcast. I just ask questions a lot. I try and find things that are interesting to me, like Jen's hair, like your hair, Jen. We talked about that for a good hour, and I know you loved every strand of time that we plucked from that. The uh, middle names, middle names, Lynn. We talked about that for a good long. And uh, the decor. Talk about the decor. So you have a lovely home. Talk a little bit about it. Talk about what's around you. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about what's around you. It'd be think... like, although avoid rashes and other things that shouldn't be talked about. Right. Especially I rashes. You bring up a good point, though, in talking about what people are passionate about. People want to talk about those things and they light, they, they light up when they talk about it. They're energized when they talk about it. So listen to someone's story or what they're saying and tune into one of those items in that story, just like, just like Stefan does in his podcast, you know, yeah. listen to how he converses with these guests. 
and 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 just how an example of lighting up just how Jen did when I asked her where she was from and she was like San Diego actually I'd never seen that type of emotion from Jen before so you just you light up that's what you get from SoCal folks you know can't take us out of the the beach beach don't you know oh there oh I love it what a Sandy response oh easy breezy okay so I think we've given some good advice there. So we are going to move on to the next segment and this is positive spin. So Jen, sometimes bad things happen. And when they do, a lot of the times, the first thoughts that we get are negative because we think, oh no, I'll never be able to go through my day because I spilled coffee on my crotch. So instead I have created a segment called positive spin where I have negative scenarios and you and I are gonna think of the positives. So it's gonna train our brains to start thinking of things that are positive sooner so we can overcome these obstacles. All right. Okay. All right. So this first scenario and only scenario, because I don't have any others, the CDC, they've come out, press release. They say, guys, you know what? Masks, they're just not working anymore. But we have a new type of protective gear. Chain mail and medieval armor, face mask, the whole bit. 100% prevents coronavirus and the spread. So that means we, from now on, will have to have the chain mail, the full armor suit, as if Mm -hmm. we were about to get ready for a joust, Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. we'd have to walk around and all that. Mm -hmm. What are some positives from that, Jen? Um, I think it would be now more socially acceptable to walk around eating a, just a big old turkey leg. Oh. Oh, okay. I love that. I, mm-hmm. I and the last time I ate a big old turkey leg was Renaissance Festival. And now, I mean, people people have to wait every Renaissance Festival to have that big old turkey leg. Now, Turkeys fear the Renaissance Festival because when it comes up, they, there's worst something time in of the, the year. air. Yes, there's a chill that there's goes down no their turkey time. spines. There's no other time the turkey is more scared than the Renaissance Festival time. Oh no, you can almost hear it in the distance because I live mm-hmm. in North Phoenix, right south of the turkey farms. Yeah. And so yeah. right around September when it's coming up, you can hear the gobbles. Yeah. Sometimes I hear it in my nightmares. Gobble. You can hear the gobbles. Gobble. Oh, and then okay. when they die, they're like gobble ghouls. So it's really that they was haunt, an, they haunt you. Gobble uh, ghouls. That was an Italian joke. Oh, got it. God. I was like, what? I was like, he's referencing something. Yeah. But, okay. But um, anyway. Okay. So, I mean, number one, big old turkey leg. Big old, big old turkey leg. Big oh, old. man. Great news for us. Terrible news for the turkeys. So, listen, you didn't say what. You didn't say this was for turkeys, so I did not. Nope, nope. And no, is that your I, main audience? Is that your main I, audience? You know, I it depends by region. There's a lot oh. of humans in San Diego and Phoenix, but then actually. once you go farther south, actually, yeah, <laughs> and around the Georgia region, there's a lot of turkeys. Yeah, so okay, I should edit right. that out. That almost sounds horrible. I don't like that. Turkeys. You can, it's your, it's your podcast. I'll, I'll give you some space to edit. Thank you, I appreciate that. Okay. So good. You thought of some positives. We're going to move on to the last. Okay. Okay. Well, actually, we've I, I have a little test segment here. I've never done okay. this one before, but self help. This you you want to be your true authentic self, right? And we talked about yes, that. Yes. How you really want to be yourself because mm-hmm. that is how you're able to best express yourself and feel the happiest. Yes. That being said, it's also funny when you impersonate others. So. <laughs> I wanted to ask, can you do any impressions of anyone? Um, I can do uh, Yoshi jumping. Wow. That's okay. Could you please? <laughs> was there more or was that? That was <laughs> Okay. That was it. Okay, wait. I can do Yoshi eating something. Please. Hello. (laughs) 
Um, it's oh just my. Yoshi. Oh, wait, wait, okay. I've, and then I have Yoshi coming home from war. Okay. Uh, and talking to his family. Okay. Hi. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> He sounds very excited to come home. Hi, family. Hi. That, Hi. Is, that is wonderful. I've never gotten Yoshi before, so I think that's Ooh. really Ooh, I thought that was going to be overdone. I've gotten a lot of Goombas, and I've gotten a lot of Toads, but no Yoshi. Everyone yet. does Toad. I, yeah, everyone's like, I got a really good Toad. If you Everyone's got a really good Toad in their pocket. Again? Jeez, can we, can we mix it up? It's like at auditions. I mean, yes, everyone's got a toad. It's in all the Instagram bios now too. It's like <laughs> I'm a Capricorn and I do a mean toad. Okay, so we've got this last question before we end the podcast. And so this last question, it's found by our fan Rob. Thank you, Rob. Shout out to Rob. Shout out Rob, and he found it on Reddit. So this says, <clears throat> "Black Stallion Dream." I was hoping someone might know what this means. I have had a very few dreams lately about a black stallion on top of a hill. I get to the bottom of the hill and the horse runs down the hill to greet me. We hug and act like old friends. But then I hug the horse and say, not yet, my friend, but soon. He rears up and then runs to the top of the hill. We nod at each other and then I wake up. Any thoughts on this dream? I'd say you're not dreaming. I'd say that's real life and what you feel like whatever you're waking up to is a dream. Your real life is so good that it seems like a dream. <laughs> Black stallions are running down hills ready to be ridden by you. Right. And you say no. Nay. Not yet, my friend. And he goes trotting back up the hill in pursuit of a nice ride. Yeah. So, you know, they say opportunity knocks. Is that what they say? Opportunity, just like Yoshi coming home from war. They knock. And this black stallion was an opportunity clip clopping. Mm. And you said no to it. Not, not yet. It'll be back though, friend. Clip Clop, yes. Maybe he will produce his new Clip Clop album. Clip Clop Hits. <laughs> you horses can now go viral on Clip Clop. Clip Clop, the greatest app. Not, not in China. Uh, who has good horses? Who has Saudi good Arabia? Horses? I cannot answer that to my fullest Top of my intelligence. I have no idea. I'm trying to test your equestrian knowledge here. You said prepare nothing. I, because obviously I thought you would have a base level of horse of knowledge. A, of horse knowledge, equestrian knowledge. You passed on the turkey test. It's been test, a minute. It's been horses. a minute. Hmm. I think there's like some sort of Saudi Arabian desert mare that is quite illustrious. So... I'll go with that. Saudi Arabian app, clip clop, mm. clap clop, mm. clip, clip clap. I like clip clop. Clip clop, yes. A genre of music, a viral social media app, mm. the voice of a nation of horses. Of horses. <laughs> <laughs> they, that's how they communicate in horse code. <laughs> <laughs> they're not actually running they're talking <laughs> they're, they are shouting at you they're cursing get ready for this and you're like not yet my friend not yet and it's like yet. damn it when will be the time but when when, when? when my friend hmm well, I think that that was some great advice. So we'll end it there. Jen, thank you so much for being on the show. I wanted to ask, where can people find you? What have you got going on? What would you like to plug? I'm on Instagram at Jennifer underscore Giralo. Made it really simple for you. I 
also I'm co-host of Bish Don't the Podcast. We're on Spotify and uh, Building Bridges Improv Podcast, which is the Bridge Improv Theater uh, Podcast. So you can find me there. Oh, that's beautiful. And you're not on Clip Clop yet? Do you have a username? <laughs> How long were you holding that? Did you do it in the moment? I did. That was... <laughs> that was right in the moment i was <laughs> that was beautiful i feel like you should really make this app clip clop the horse I mean, the horse's dream there's a market for it you know you're you're what are you orange you're an I entrepreneur guess, entrepreneur, i guess right that's true i guess it could go mainstream <laughs> as i stroke my mane so many, there's too many there's too many horse puns it's a horseshoe in that's what it is <laughs> wonderful it's beautiful <laughs> hopefully you're not sick of me yet but you know what you can be because we're about to end the podcast well okay. okay let me say thank you so much jen for this time with me this was great and um i feel like i'm a better person because of it <laughs> i hope you are as well and i'm way better <laughs> from when i started this podcast <laughs> i'm way better if i were to look at the start of this episode i would be like oh my god i i'm such a different person now oh yeah i mean it's not a horse race or anything so we're not competitive but <laughs> i feel like we made leaps and bounds did. we did with our self-help so uh, i feel more Thank stable, you for <laughs> stable word. how do you know what's your deep knowledge of horse horse vocabulary in cottonwood arizona actually Oh, actually, <laughs> I was, I was a horse tamer. I don't know if you're joking because everything you've said was truth up until now. Is that a joke? That was a joke. Yes. That okay, was a joke. Okay. I don't know shit really about anything. horses. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. This is a lot of fun. This was a, a fantastic time. And yeah. I hope to, once things go public, no, once, once, you know the pandemic kind of ends right and you have your shows i'd love to go see one yeah and support you yeah awesome yeah. all right thank well, you thank you and thank you listeners whoa forgot it didn't see you there still don't see you oh, going in blind you're still here you're I'm still like here a, i feel like a turkey just just I, I feel that the knife is near but i'm i i all i can do is gobble in fear but i'm gobbling in the love because you guys are axing us with listens and downloads and shares and all that stuff. So thank you. And please let me gobble that all up. Gobble, 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 gobble. Gob. Thank you guys. And all right, well, we're gonna end the show. Jen, if you wanna stay on for like 30 seconds afterwards, that would be great. But listeners, love you all, rub you guys so much. And we'll talk at you next week. Bye-bye. That means the end in horse. Beautiful. <laughs> That was cool.